Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. It's time I continue with my rewiring project. Um, Got to do the interior wiring. I've already done the fuse box installation. I've done the uh, front headlight section with the turn signals and the horn and all of that. And I've done the start charge system and the engine wiring. So now, got to go inside the car, which I'm not looking forward to because there's not a whole lot of room and I'm a pretty big guy. So it's not going to be fun, but let's get to it. This looks really scary, but I do need to keep in mind that a lot of this is the taillight section that's going to get run. I'm going to sort of separate all of this right now and just have the things up here that are going to be part of the switches. The dimmer switch, the ignition switch, the headlight switch. Uh, get all of that separated out so it's out of my way. Got all my tools, got my book. Um, everything I pretty much need here in the car. Just not a lot of room for me. <laughs> I've had a chance to get everything separated a little bit, so it's not quite so crazy in here. My taillight section wires are over here out of the way. The rest of this is the ignition and, and pretty much everything else that's up here. These wires are just wires to my new gauges. I've got a voltmeter. Um, oil pressure gauge and water temp gauge um, that I just need to connect so I've got those up out of the way for now and my first um, project is going to be the dimmer switch so I've got my dimmer switch uh, lines up and ready to go because we've got to go back in here so the first thing we're going to do is the dimmer and I need to get the carpet out of the way and get the old wires out and see if we can't get these new ones installed so hopefully you can kind of make it out but this is the route there's actually this sort of plastic piece in here that they use to route all, everything to the tail light section so the old wires are in here they're sort of tucked away these are the old wires that go to the dimmer switch itself which is right up here let me see if i can get this unplugged uh, not with one hand but I just need to remove this switch. Maybe I can use this uh, connector with my new wires. We'll see. So yeah, there we go. We can see the dimmer switch a bit better. Um, it does have a couple of clips on it uh, that hold it up. And see if I can get my new wires to go into here. Okay, one thing I'm keeping in mind as I'm working on these wires is routing everything so what I'm wanting to not do is ha end up pulling wires around other wires to get them over there. I'm kind of digging, like for example, these are gonna be going here. So I'm, I had made sure I got these at the bottom of this mess so that it can go in here, be tucked up out of the way under the carpet, plug into this, but it's not you know, pulling on any of the other wires up here. So it's constantly going in and sort of untangling and unscrambling the spaghetti to get everything that you need to be you know, quick access, but that it's also not wrapped around anything else. So Painless doesn't have a clip like this for, on my dimmer switch. So uh, just in case you don't know, in order to get your wires out, the old ones, you just get a really thin screwdriver, slide it in here to the bottom until you sort of feel it grab. And then that's going to loosen the wire so it comes out. So again, you just put it not on the top part where there's more room, but on that little bottom area where there's not as much room, you're just sort of bending back up the clip. And then that lets you take out the old wire. So all I have to do is put on new of the connectors like these. And then I can still use this, which is still in pretty good shape considering it's 57 years old. The other thing I want to do too is, of course, cut this length of wire. You can see there's a lot, but it only has to go right up here. So I can pretty much lose this much of the wire 
and take that off because it's not going as far. It's just going up to the dimmer switch. I think they give you extra wire in case you have a column mounted dimmer. The newer models, in, at least in the GM, some of them are in the column. The old, this is a 68, so mine is down here on the floor, so I don't need as much wire. Okay, I've got my wires soldered and just need to do the shrink wrap. And then we're good to go to plug those back into the dimmer switch. Actually, blue and green wire goes to the headlight switch. Then the green goes to the high beam. It's going to need some persuasion to get all the way in there. All right. And then the tan one is the low beam. And I forgot to put shrink wrap on that one. got all three prongs in there and up close and all I need to do now is plug it into my dimmer switch of course it actually feels like it fits better got it plugged in uh, it takes a little work in to get it over those clips on either side but we're good to go. That's plugged in. Now I can sort of tuck this behind the carpet, put the carpet back. And this came with a little sort of gasket to go over that to hold it down. That's one switch done. Ah, the next up is the headlight switch. Oh man. I do not know how to take this out without breaking it. So let's see. The headlight switch itself is in pretty good shape. It still comes in and out. You can see it's like on, all the way on. It still has a good little snap when you turn the interior lights on. Um, but I'm thinking I'm gonna have to get under here to access that to get it out. But that bezel is on tight. Like, I mean, really tight. I managed to get this out. Um, what it is on the headlight switch itself, there's a little button. If you depress that button, you can pull this out. You've got to get it depressed all the way up. And I'll show it to you once I get this out. But next I've got to unscrew this threaded bolt here. Uh, I'm going to need a really, really wide screwdriver or a chisel or something to unscrew that. But I'll take it out and show you where that button is. But yeah, you just push the button and this pops right out. And then I think when I unscrew that, the bezel itself can stay because like I said, it's it's on there pretty well. All right, there we go. So I can actually heard it drop back there. But that's how you take out your uh, headlight switch. Release the button, pull this out, then use something as wide as you possibly can to unscrew this. And there is the headlight switch. And not much room to work with. That's going to be fun. So I was able to unplug the switch itself. And then this is actually the wiring that I'm going to be replacing. So I'm going to again use this clip, get all the little prongs taken out, and there are, I believe, seven wires. One, two, three, four, four, five, six. So there's only six. Huh. thought there were supposed to be more. But this is everything. This is the headlights, taillights, parking lights. Um, yeah, so I mean it's the, plus a power supply. So yeah, I've got to, I believe that's the power. Um, but I'm going to take a picture of this so I know which ones go where, and good to go. And just so you can see it, this is the little button here that you have to depress to get that 
rod free. Um, it does not press very easily. There's a spring on it. You can kind of hear it clicking. But yeah, that's that's what you've got to reach up in there and push down. Rod comes out and it's catching on this little tip here. Okay, I've got some of my headlight switch wires here, but it's starting to become a mess, as you can see. So I'm gonna tape off the wires. That way I can trace them back up here and make sure I get them sort of all separated and over onto this side, because they are all gonna live up in here. I think I'm also gonna make these wires a little bit longer because this is just not enough room to solder all these up and everything else. So I think I may end up having to have a little bit longer wire and maybe wrap up the extra and hopefully I can find some room up here. I'm just trying to avoid the big packed maze of wires all taped up and zip tied and, and everything and then just having it be a mess because they had it nice and clean when they were able to do it. This is what the original one looked like and it's all nice and tight and wrapped up. So yeah, I'm just going to see if I can get these all taped off and then s separate them all from everything else. Okay, I've got six of the seven marked. My only problem is the seventh is this wire and it's not connected to anything. <laughs> um, so I don't know what's happened. This is the instrument panel lighting wire and it does not connect to anything. So I'm guessing maybe I'll at least get it capped or connect it, get a connector on here and plug it in and then see if this is gonna end up going somewhere. But yeah, I'm not sure what to do um, other than just connect it, put it into the headlight switch and then put everything back up in there. And then I'm gonna have this wire hanging down and maybe there's something I messed up. It doesn't look like I cut it at either end accidentally. It looks like it was professionally cut on both ends. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, hoping further down through the book, it'll tell me what's going on. If not, I may have to reach out to Painless. So I've got my seven wires all stripped. Just need to put the connectors on and get them into the plug. Got the headlight switch here and I'm going based on the early style GM headlight switch. And so yeah, I've just got to follow along. It looks like the power goes here. Anyway, I'll figure all of these out, get them all plugged in, but I've got all my connectors on and just need to line up the diagram with the actual switch. Actually, first, following my own rule, I figured it might be a good idea to get everything aligned over here, and I think I actually may tape everything off now while I've got this together. I had a little issue trying to line up. It looks like there's like these two are here side by side, but when you look at the switch itself, there's nothing side by side. However, this did have a hole over here that's side by side. The problem is there's no prong there. So what I had to do was shift it over and make the one that was here and then the side by side one. I had that one go in here, and this one go over here. Anyway, it's it takes a little bit of lining up, but now everything should be Everything that has a prong has a wire, and hopefully I got them right. If I didn't, if there are light, the dome light doesn't work, for example, or something like that, I can at least figure out, hey, maybe I've got plugged into the wrong one here. But I'm gonna plug this in, tape this up, finish taping this up, and get that back up in there and out of the way. And here's a quick tip for you. Don't tape up so much that you can't read the wire numbers. I actually had to take about this much tape back off just so I could see the numbers. So 
It's a good idea to get it started, but do not tape up until you've got everything plugged in correctly. Another thing to sort of be aware of, you're dealing with some really tight spaces. You're putting these connect terminal connectors down in there, and then the prongs that are sticking up can sometimes push the wire back out. So hopefully you've got it in far enough that it clips and hooks on. Um, this one actually came up on me when I pushed hard enough down to get this onto the headlight switch. So I think what it was was I had taken it out because I had it in the wrong place and I think my little tab got bent back. So keep that in mind that when you're pushing these down, so check every wire, make sure it's not coming back up. Here's one right here. This one, the tab is not down very well. And I'm gonna pull that tab back out, drop it back down in there. So yeah, just check all your wires because otherwise you put it all back up in there and something doesn't work and it's only because it's not connected anymore. One thing I noticed before I put this headlight switch back in, there's a little bit of a tab right here, and I noticed that there's a little notch up here. So I think when I put that back up in there, I wanna make sure that I get that notch lined up so it'll pretty much go in like this. That keeps this from spinning then when you're turning and putting on the little piece that holds it in place on the bezel. No, I can't find it anyway. So it was a struggle to get this switch back up in there. Got it lined up into the groove. Uh, when you do push this in, do not expect this to just click back on. You do have to push that button again on the headlight switch to get it to connect because otherwise it just kept coming out. But now it goes in and out, stays in there. Click off, click on so the brightness can work. Hopefully I got all the wires connected in the right spot, but the headlight switch is done. Okay, next up is our brake switch. And like, like I said, I've got the brake switch that's connected up here. So it's mechanical when you push on the brake, it turns the light on back there. And it's just these two wires, the orange and the white. And I've got them sort of routed away from the tail section and gonna have to ha cut them off. Just need to get the switch out of there first and hopefully I can easily reach it and not break it. All right, here is the brake switch. You can see it sort of has a little piston that goes up into uh, the brake pedal. Please don't break. All right, so there we go. I just need to replace this brownish, tannish-ish wire and the orange one. One thing to make sure you do is if you've got uh, the mechanical switch up there like I do, make sure that the wires are not gonna get interfered with by the brake pedal itself. You don't want to, one, have that get cut or have it hang up the brake pedal where you can't brake correctly. So that's one thing to make sure is just keep those wires out of the way. But I've got them trimmed off and I just need to put my connectors on. And yeah, got it plugged back in. And the brake switch is done. What's great is we got a lot less wiring down here than we used to. Actually, no, it doesn't look any better. There's still a ton of wires. Next up is the turn signal switch, I believe. Okay, Joy. These are my turn signal wires. All eight of them. The kit does come with these pieces, which looks like it's uh, for a lot of aftermarket columns and mid-70s onward turn signal connections. I don't have that. Um, right now, I could probably almost use the wiring that's in here. So what I would do is connect everything to my turn signal switch. The problem I've got is, so like for example, if I used this wiring, this is also the turn signal, these two half circles plugged together. But these wires don't match the color of these wires. And those wires don't match these color wires. Well, they kind of maybe do. 
but <laughs> I may need to try to find a turn signal switch wiring diagram. Then I've also got to find these type of prongs because they also don't come with the kit. So what I'll need to do is cut these wires to length, put these prongs on, figure out which order they go into that switch. Then I can plug them into the existing switch, which runs up into my column. That's going to take some time because I've done a, just a quick search on the turn signal wiring. Nothing's out there. I may have to purchase something. All right, so I found out the correct order for the wiring to go into the plug. The one thing that I realized, though, is I'm going to need to replace this anyway. At some point, they there was a horn issue. They'd connected another switch up here and then operated the horn from this little button, and they cut this wire. So I realized that for my horn to work, I'm going to need to have this in there. So what I figured I would do is, is still use these pieces. I'll still use these half circles, and I will cut this off, take my old one out, put the new one in, then I'll be replacing the the whole unit up here as well as like you know the canceling unit, everything of the turn signal switch up here, all of that will be brand new. And it's 50 some years old. I'm sure that plastic's not in great shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my turn signal out, my turn signal switch out, buy a new set, run the wiring down, and maybe still use these same connectors. Popped my cap off, made sure I knew where to put it back up with tape so I can line it back up. And as you can see, the horn is a little more complicated in this car. It's probably why they did what they did. But there is a separate wire that runs up to each one of these buttons. So this way, like I said, I'm going to have a whole new setup of wiring in here. The new switch um, and then the horn wiring should be correct. It's what they didn't want to do the last time, obviously. Use the steering wheel puller to get the steering wheel off. There's a lot of videos out there on pulling a steering wheel. This one wasn't terribly hard. After I took the center nut off, I just put the steering wheel puller on there and pulled it off. This is the uh, canceling turn signal canceling unit. And there is a little spring in, and there is a little spring in here. So that just comes out along with the spring. And then this is my turn signal switch. So I think there are three screws. One, two, three, holding that in. I'm gonna take that out. Like I said, I'm gonna probably have to cut this because I don't think this will pull all the way through. And then I can get my uh, turn signal switch out, get a new one in there. That one's looking a little old. So probably not a bad idea that I'm changing it out. That's not going to want to come through with that tape on there. All right, old turn signal switch is out. Okay, so I'm going to try to not go on too much of a rant on painless, but it is several days later. Uh, I did pick up a new turn signal switch, and I had some issues with what how I was going to connect the switch. Let me show you. So for the year, this is the correct turn signal switch. As you can see, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, this particular switch comes with these. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember what to call these, but these were standard sort of mid 60s, late 60s. I think they're called Delphi or Packard uh, connectors and terminals. You can see they're sort of like triangle shaped. And uh, where is it? Oh, it's the same kind that are on this one as well. The problem is you can't buy these connectors anymore. I mean, you cannot buy these connectors anymore. Uh, one company sells them, but you gotta buy 2,500 at a time. Uh, another company in Australia had them. Uh, would have taken weeks with uh, customs and shipping and all of that kind of stuff, so that was a no deal. 
Uh, somebody on eBay sells them for $3.95 a piece. I think what they did was they bought the $2,500 pack and are selling them individually at $4 a pop. So anyway, what I figured I would do is use the connector that came with the painless kit, right? Problem. So these are the connectors that came in the kit and it, the kit came with these terminals, which looks like they are, you know, would fit in through here, into their box, and a sort of a flat connector would then go in between those two sections, right? Problem is, the painless kit came with these, didn't come with the other connectors. So I called up painless and I said, what should I do? Oh, well you need to order the kit that has the connectors that go with these. So what did I have to buy? The same thing that I already had. The two pieces, and it comes with more of these, only so I could get these little silver flat pieces that you see here. So for eight flat connectors to plug into these gold ones, I had to spend 25, 30 bucks. And that's stupid. If you're going to include these, include these. Because most people are going to have these if you're working on a muscle car from the 60s, maybe early 70s. So if you can't include these because nobody else can apparently do that, these things are worth a fortune right here apparently. But if you can't include, if you, if you can't include these that will match to both sides of the harness because this comes with this and, you know, I can't use it, I just can't use it. So I had to go drive over to Jegs, pick up this kit, just so I could get these eight little terminals for $25, just to use what already came with the kit. That's just crazy. Anyway, let's see if I can get all the wires lined up in the correct order. I need to cut all these off now and add either the silver ones or these gold ones. And get them lined up into these connectors so that we can be good to go with the turn signal switch. Rant over. So I've got all the flat connectors on that attach to the turn signal switch. Just need to feed these back down through the steering wheel. I'm not even going to say that that was close to being easy. Um, in fact, I even knocked a few of my connectors off. Two of them anyway. Um, but what I would recommend if you are ever installing your switch for the turn signals, don't try to shove them all in at once. I fed them all in, well, I tried to shove them all in at once, twice. But I, what did work was I put them down through in order. So I put the white one, then the green one, yellow, purple, blue, blue, black. Um, that kept them flat as they were going in. So the white one was first, and then the green one, then the yellow one, and it kept them a little more flat as they were going in. That worked. Um, what I am going to do is get this all hooked up. Uh, I am not going to put the steering wheel back on because I just realized this gives me a lot more room. So I think I'm going to keep the steering wheel um, out of the way, but get everything hooked up, put back together, and hopefully I can figure it out. Now, if you do have a Pontiac, uh, they did a very evil thing that I didn't realize when I took it out, but I found three springs down in here that had fallen out. And apparently each one of these springs go into these holes, the three holes that you use to screw this back on. See the three holes? There's one there too. Um, yeah, there, there's springs behind this, I guess maybe to move it up and down with the horn or something. I don't know, but whatever. There are springs in there and luckily I found them and fished them out. Uh, but I got to make sure I get those back in correctly. I'm um, going to try to do it back in order of everything I took out. And the other thing that this one came with was a little kit for the hazard switch, which now I can't find. Yeah, here's that kit. So it's got a little spring screw and the plunger for the, to pull the hazard switch out and a little screw. All right, so good news. Um, the uh, turn signal switch has wiring and it matches up to the wiring 
in the book. So I don't have to do anything crazy. It's black, light blue, blue, brown, purple, yellow, green, white. And that's the, the order that it goes in. And then in the book, black, light blue, blue, brown, purple, yellow, green, white. Okay, so I was kind of confused with the springs. The springs don't actually go in here. The springs stick down through these holes. And so what I did was I took the little C-clip off the washer and turned it and this piece came out. So what I need to do is put the springs on the other side. And I'll kind of show you when I figure it out. All right, so I took out this little backing plate. I basically took apart the entire thing. Took this section off as well. Because the springs have to go between here, these two points. So I can't really kind of hold it up and show it to you. But uh, the other thing that was important is I realized I had my wires sort of bent. So I pulled them back through so that they could be as flat as possible once they're in there. Sorry if I'm not explaining this too well, but again, I just took the entire thing apart so that I could then put all of the three screws into this, into this plate, and then be able to put this back down in. This might be able to show you better. So I ran the screw all the way through to this plate. I'm going to screw the entire thing in and then see if I can slide it back on. Okay, here it is. Um, <laughs> it's actually a lot easier if you try to do it this way rather than pushing the screws or the bolts down and screwing them in, hoping you can line it up with the springs and all of that. Um, so really it's just going to be a matter now of getting the wiring so it's not bunched up here, sliding everything back together, and you kind of have to notch it. Um, this piece has like a notch so that when you're done it kind of not locks in and then the one thing you want to make sure of is if you see here my steering wheel straight up and down is off to an angle a little bit so it's not directly straight up and down my wheels must not be perfectly lined up but when you get it up this screw should be lined up with that steering notch so it may be a little off to the side like that in my case because like I said you can see that the line there is a little notch here and it's almost pointed more towards one o'clock so I may be wanting to be at this sort of an angle so that this bolt which is normally straight up and down is off to the one o'clock side a little bit and matches that so I did watch a video um, Another guy was doing a video, gosh, 10 years ago, and he put the snap ring back on, and I kind of wanted to show here that there is, he, he couldn't find the groove, there is a groove right in there, so when the steering wheel is going back, or when this, everything is getting locked back in, you do want to make sure you're hitting that groove with that lock ring. So after much, much trial and error, I've got it all back and reassembled. Uh, I tried to have these inside this. This didn't go all the way up because this has got to fit down in there. And then you clock it to keep it in. If you've got a Pontiac, this is what the finished product looks like. Now the other thing that I will ask that you keep in mind, when you're putting your turn signal switch in, make sure the wires can flow well when they're inside here that they're not getting twisted or bind, bound up uh, it's one of the problems that i had when i first started putting it together i realized i kind of had these twisted and they didn't lay very flat in here so yeah that's something to keep in mind so now i just need to once again feed the wires down in and um, get these wires set up to plug in so we having fun yet? Yes, we are having lots and lots of fun. All right, let 
me see if with two hands I can get this thing correct. just not turning in there all right I'll keep fighting with it okay got it in the trick is to there's that little plate that's down there at the bottom with the springs I had these bolts just a bit too tight I had just one I really just want to just put up one thread in that gives that plate the chance to go down there get in there and turn and then it's on there tight and then you can tighten up these bolts so that's back in. I'm going to set up, I'm not going to set up the turn signal or the hazard because I'm afraid I'll break it off. But at least this is in here ready to go. We'll be able to put the steering wheel back on, turn signal, all that stuff. But for now, um, all I need to do is just match up these wires. I actually fed these down through here, but now I'm wondering if that's a good idea. Um, I think I may be taking this out in order to do the ignition switch next. So, let me poke around in here and see what all I need to do. I have a feeling this, this is coming out. Okay, so I've got all of the gold sort of two-prong connectors coming from my fuse box in here. And just need to get these connectors onto this one. Got these ends on and just going to start sliding them into this little box. And just got to make sure the wire colors match up. Expected more of a click, but it's in there. Everything's feeling good. The turn signal switch is kind of done. I've got it connected, but I still need to hook up everything in the turn signal, hazard, the lever, put the steering wheel back on. But for now, the switch is done. Everything is done, taken care of. And now we move on to the ignition switch. What I'm gonna do is see if I can disassemble the ignition switch, get the, the lock cylinder out, and uh, cut it over to the accessory. I can feel that spring in there. Let me see if I can get this out. All right, there we go. Got my tumbler out. Still in the accessory position. But there's nothing to screw in on this one. I've seen a couple examples where you they screw in. This one does not. Uh, so yeah, looks like I'm gonna need to go in from underneath to get this out. The bezel does. Well, actually, wait a minute. Yes, the bezel does screw out as well. It was just a little stuck. So I'm going to keep these together, and voila! Alright, I can feel my ignition switch sort of hanging down here. So, okay, just need to see if I can unplug that, use that piece to then be able to plug back in. Actually, let me see if I can do it from up here. Oh, ain't no way. Not much room to work with, but you can see the ignition switch here. It's got the clip on both sides. So I'm going to see if I can loosen these up and get the switch out. Probably not with one hand. All right. I'll be back. Okay, I got it out. Um, managed to not break it. <laughs> um, some of them I got disconnected. I was trying really hard to get a wire cutter on it, on it and I couldn't. But I disconnected a few and then that gave me some more room and I was able to cut the rest. Oh my gosh. 
not very fun. There was probably a way easier way to do this, but at least it's out and I can wire up the ignition switch. So I've got the old one out and everything should match up fairly well. Um, I can see here for battery, battery's red, accessories, to the coil, to the ignition, solenoid. The only thing that has me a little concerned is there's a prong in here that says GRD. And for, I would assume, for a lot of all the power that's coming into this, you might want to ground this out. But they do not mention anywhere in here if you have a ground to ground it out or if you don't need it anymore. So I think I might have to actually call Painless and say, hey guys, mine has a ground prong. Do I need to ground out this ignition switch? So yeah, it's uh, going to be a matter of just getting everything into the right order on my old plastic piece and should be able to connect this and get this back up and fairly easy. Well, easy-ish. I had a chance to do a little research on this ground post that's on the ignition switch. And what I found out is that um, this is a wire, I believe, I'm just kind of guessing, but I believe it's running from the instrument panel down to the ignition switch. And it's completing a circuit that turns on your sort of idiot lights. So the lights that come on when you crank the engine over and it shows your uh, water temp gauge light and your maybe your oil pressure light, that's coming on and letting you know that those lights still work. And I think that was part of it. And that's the reason why they're not mentioning it here. The actual switch itself doesn't really require a ground, so to speak. And again, I'm not entirely sure. Let me know in the comments if you know differently. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's just to make sure that the lights come on when you're starting the car shows you, hey, yes, if your um, oil temp warning comes on or your water, or not oil temp, but your oil light comes on or your water temp light comes on, it's saying, hey, these are, these are working and then they turn off once that circuit's complete, once you start it up and pull back off of the start. So I think that's what that is and that's the reason why they don't really mention it here. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, I'm not, I've got my other gauges, mechanical gauges, uh, that I'm depending on, so I'm not going to worry about having a ground on this one. I do have to admit, it's getting a little bit less scary in here. <laughs> um, not quite as many wires. Now, for the um, ignition switch, I'm only going to need five. And um, so I just need to sort of sort through what all I need. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to tape them up. And once I'm once I've got the connections and everything ready to go, I'll snake them up over the steering uh, column, uh, the steering wheel shaft, because I've got to go all the way up to back here. And the ones that are in there now are up in there as well uh, and over the steering column. But I think what I'm going to have to do is make these wires a bit longer so that I can do all, do all the work and make all the connections and then just sort of stuff them up in there. The ones that are up in there are very short. It, it was almost impossible for me to just reach up in there and attach them and, and put that in. I, I just need to have, I'm going to have to have a little bit more wire. And so a lot of this is going to be coming out and I'll be able to make more room. This is all my old wiring. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm going to have to give myself a little bit extra slack, I guess. I believe it is just these five wires. These are the five that I'm going to need. It's the ignition switch, the battery power, the accessory power, the switched fuse, uh, power to the fuse block, uh, starter solenoid. Um, this one's a little trickier. And uh, the power to the coil fuse, which I think is this one. Okay, so the reason why that purple wire is going to be a little tricky is because it's not going to be coming in directly to the ignition switch. I actually have to go to my uh, neutral safety switch, uh, which in my car is on the, it's a console shifted uh, on the floor uh, automatic shifter. So I'm going to have to go from the, that purple wire is going to have to go to the neutral safety switch, then up into the ignition switch. So that's something I've got to kind of figure out here in a minute. To access my neutral safety switch, it's down by the shifter, which is a floor shifter. 
If you've got a column shift, it might be down at the base of the column. But in my case, I had to take this out. Ah, what's it attached to? Ah, there's one more up here. All right, got the console out of the way. And here is the neutral safety switch. It's this little half circle. Two are for the reverse lights, two are for the solenoid to make sure it's in neutral. And I think it's these purple wires here. Got my wires taped up. Again, I'm gonna feed them over the uh, steering column. I may not really be able to get things organized because there's a lot of wires clamped up in here until I can get this off and start doing the instrument panel wiring. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a mess under there, but at least have them taped together and separated out. The only thing I'm not taping up is that starter solenoid wire. Um, this one, I'm not sure how I'm gonna run it because it's gotta go over here to the uh, console, then back up to the ignition switch. So that one's gonna be in a separate sort of loom. Okay, this is kind of important because I actually did make a mistake. When you're cutting off and crimping your wires, make sure you know the gauges of the wires. For example, one of these is 14 gauge, it's the pink one. These other three are 12 gauge, and I cut them all with 14s, and I trimmed some of these wires, the actual copper part. So I went back, cut the tips off again, and then crimped the, or trimmed these off with the 14 uh, gauge section on my crimper. And that way I didn't cut as quite as much wire off of it. The pink one was fine because I did use a 14 on that. So keep that in mind when you're cutting these off, you may be cutting off some of your wire that you need. These are, the ignition is very important and you wanna make sure you don't take any wire out. Decision time. Do I use the regular terminal connectors, push them through here, hope they all make a good connection and plug it back into here. This is 57 years old. And like me, it's never uh, doing too well. It looks a little bent up if you ask me actually. Um, or do I use the insulated connectors, do wires straight into these and just plug them in one at a time. I've only got five connections. I don't have all eight like I did before. Uh, maybe tape them off a little bit and then just plug them in. I don't know. I'm leaning this way. Getting tired of having to make absolutely perfectly straight connections and then being able to shove them down in here. And then this isn't easy to disconnect as it is. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with these. Go with these and if I need to, I can always just disconnect them one by one. So according to my wiring diagram, this is pretty much how it would look. Got everything hooked up, these four wires. The only one I don't have, of course, is my purple wire. But yeah, so this one, once it would come up from the neutral safety switch, it would be the final wire that would go in here where it's marked SOL. All right, so I think I'm gonna actually wrap up the video here. Um, I'm realizing that I still have to mess around with the wiring for the neutral safety switch before I can really finish this ignition switch. And I think I want to get a new switch for the neutral safety switch because it's been in there 57 years and it's been going, you know, shifting back and forth for, for quite a long time now. So um, do the whole like, comment, subscribe thing. If you can, I'd really appreciate it. Um, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Let me know if I got anything wrong or if you have any suggestions and um like it if you got anything out of it i'd appreciate it and subscribe if you can because like i said more rewiring to come going to finish up the interior here do the taillight section and then hopefully see if i can get this car started for the first time since last year uh, but yeah thank you very much for tuning in we will catch you next time